This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Today we have aliens and camera sliders. Good on you. The show that takes the mystery out of the effects technique. It's going to stop your Halloween films. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm calmly. Before we get started, the music from that short bit we just showed with the alien is from our new royalty free music pack, which we're going to be selling in about two weeks. It comes out on September 10th and will be the first of many. Just like our other packs, our main motivation here was to put something out that would help low budget filmmakers. And royalty free music can be something that's very difficult to find and very expensive. So this will be a pack of 12 epic tracks, each with their layers of music all broken out. So if it has strings in it, that'll be its own track, and you'll be able to take and edit them however you want to fit your scene, which is exactly what I did for this scene. You can see in my timeline here that I took all those individual tracks right into Premiere to compose my scene. I'm really happy with how this is turning out, and I think you guys are gonna love it. I'll be doing a tutorial on it when we release it as well, so you'll be able to see how it works even more. Also, our fight sound effects pack comes out next week, which I I'm ridiculously excited about. The sounds are insane, but more about that at that time. Anyway, I got this message. Hey Ryan, I was gonna show an alien in my film, but I don't have good costume ideas. This one sparked an idea for an extremely simple compositing trick. So let's do that. My first thought was to try to get a costume, but without money, that would definitely land in the area of extremely cheesy. Next thought was to do CG, but again, without money and a ton of time, also cheesy. Then I looked at the desk figure I have, this little guy right here, the seven inch collectible from Ridley Scott's Alien, and that's when I thought of this super simple technique. First, we got the shot of Josh backing into his mark, and as you could see, we lit it very strategically, a shaft of light and then blackness right behind Josh. Next, I grabbed my alien asset to work in. I did this by taking a still frame from the shot I did with Josh and using that as a reference to line up my alien. And I'm shooting the alien much closer than I shot Josh to make it appear as though he's much bigger in size than he actually is. I'm also doing it at a much lower angle to make him appear taller. And of course, we are matching the light as well. Then I'm gonna push the alien into the light so that it appears from the darkness. And as you can see here, I'm actually using a flashlight for my key light instead of a 1K and my backlight of blue is a much smaller LED. But now that I have my two shots, I take these bad boys into After Effects, place a shot of Josh in first, then the one of the alien above that. Next, I grab the masking tool, mask out the area of the alien in which I want to put in, and keyframe the mask if needed. Quacka from a top! Whenever you are keyframing a mask in a situation like this, it's the best practice to create your mask, then hit the stopwatch to set a keyframe for the first frame, then move to the end of your clip and adjust your mask. Then you can move through in chunks, making your changes. Do this instead of going frame by frame to have a more smooth mask that you can knock out quicker since you aren't tweaking every single frame. Of course, if you are working on something handheld with a lot of movement, you're gonna have to work a bit more at it considering those big movements. But now with that finished, we have... <laughs> A super simple technique that is using those dark areas to blend the two shots together. That's it, easy and whatnot. But now, a quick break to thank our sugar daddy and we'll talk some slider loving. Main.com is a place to go if you're trying to get yourself seen on the internet, whether you got a business. There it is. I knew it wasn't gonna last. That wasn't, last week was a fluke. That wasn't messing with you. I was emphasizing your words. Okay. They got the hosting plans that are reliable and affordable and the domain discovery service help you pick the right name for you if the one I'll you want pick it. is taken. And if you use a coupon code FILMRIDE to check out, you get 15% off your domain off your domain name and web hosting. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Think domain.com. I mean, it wasn't that destructive to the ad, so yeah, I, I can live with that. <laughs> Logo. So if you missed Monday's episode, we have a new Monday challenge. This one is one of my favorites so far. It's the Spielberg challenge. And I'm not gonna go into the details, though if you want to know more about that and get involved, check out this episode here. The reason I bring it up is because our giveaway this time is a carbon core slider from Rhino Camera. This guy 
right here, which I have to say, this is one of the smoothest sliders that I've used. Shockingly smooth, actually. Off the bat, one of the unique things about this slider is that you can remove the all-terrain feet, the end caps, the carriage, and then replace the rails with longer rails if you want to, without having to buy all those additional pieces as well. But back to the slider itself, this one is a two foot slider with carbon fiber rails. It's ridiculously light and easy to set up. I mean, we have the all train feet here. You swing them out to set them where you want, or you can use the plate on the bottom here for easy mounting on your tripod. We also have threads on either end of the slider on the end caps for other mounting options. And here is the carriage. <laughs> which is where you will mount the camera, which has a screw mount for the camera to mount it right to the carriage. <laughs> Undercarriage. Oh my God. You know what I'm talking about. It uses these wheels to travel along the rails and has these knobs here to lock the carriage in place. <laughs> <laughs> or can be used to release or add resistance so you can set how much or how little you want for your move. There are dampeners here on the side that are made for adding resistance to your move, but honestly, they didn't really do very much for me, so I just use the locking screws to do that and it works great. <laughs> what? Carriage. Oh God. Now, although you can mount right to the carriage, like, <laughs> like so, which is great for super fast, easy solutions. I prefer to throw on a mini ball head or <laughs> what? Mini ball head, you're killing me. <laughs> or a flat mount head to the carriage, then my camera, if I can, <laughs> give me some distance from the rails for more clearance and flexibility to adjust the camera in whatever position that I want. Get out of town. <laughs> you're awful. But now, let's take a look at some shots with this bad boy. Super smooth and lightweight, crazy easy to get around and set up in different configurations. And with those all-terrain feet adjustable as they are, I could set them up on like that little rock mount and just set the legs how I need them to be to be completely stable on a surface like that. Plus another thing I like to do is to set the slider just a little bit off its tilt so it's not fully level. That way I can just let it go and gravity will do its work for me to get a crazy smooth motion. But the thing that I really dig most about this is the lightweight factor, how interchangeable everything is. Like the wheels on the carriage, if those go bad, you can just replace them. So if you have an issue with any piece on the rig, you can easily just swap that out. And finally, just how insanely buttery smooth it is. It's a bit cheaper than comparable sliders, but it is still what I would consider in the low pro price range at $425. And I don't think that this guy cancels out my Kessler systems either. What I love about this is how simple, stripped down, and light it is. Perfect for run and gun stuff, especially one man band type stuff. But I wouldn't kit this out with a big camera strapped with monitors, batteries, and all the other trimmings. I'll leave that heavy lifting to my Kessler sliders and my one man band quick moving type stuff to this guy. But again, just a reminder, we are giving away one of these awesome sliders. So go right here to learn more about the Monday challenge. And if you just wanna learn more about this slider, go right here for that. I really, really dig this one. And I'm just stupid impressed with how smooth it is. Pick something groovy, Alex. But that is it for today, you sexy land dwellers. Before I go though, if you are a lady person that watches our show, jump over to our Facebook page right here. We wanna know if you would like us to make some women's filmmaker shirts. So do us a solid, Jump over and tell us what you think. And again, we are launching our new fight sound effects pack next week. It comes with over 600 sounds. 600 sounds, a bunch of fully designed out, ready to use, just drag and drop sounds. But then all our recorded raw sounds for you to make whatever you want with from scratch. That's some, some of the feedback we got from our gun pack. A lot of people wish we had the raw sounds in there. So that's something we wanted to make available for our more pro audio guys that really want to dive in and go crazy with those sounds. I am super proud of this pack. Rob Kreckle really outdid himself with this one. We're also gonna be releasing it at a reduced price for the first few days so all our loyal Film Riot peeps can get it at a lower cost. Then it will go up to what it will be normally priced at. But that is all for now. I will see you next week when I tell Louis that there is nothing wrong with my bomb maker.
Oh, damn. 